Hi. Hi. Howdy. Hello. This is Two Girls, One Ghost. Two Girls, One Ghost. And I'd like to, well, first, I'd like to introduce ourselves. That's Corinne, and I'm Sabrina. Hello. And I'd like to present a warning up front of this episode. Perfect. Thank you. And the next episode. The following two-parter might possess or haunt you. (sighs) Happy holidays. This is poorly timed for us. (laughs) <laughs> we're going on the road and now we're possessed. Or perfectly time. Oh my gosh. I mean, already we're having a ton of audio and recording issues. So yeah, it's a it great like start. 10 minutes to even be able to start. I've been bit by so many mosquitoes. Mm-hmm. Which It's feels a, warning. Like a warning. Everything's warning us to not yeah. do it. Well, and if anyone listened to the episode that came out last week, you'll know that I had discussed doing a haunted doll named Mm -hmm. Peggy. And I had the worst nightmares that I could have ever even thought of. It was like the worst. It was like what would happen in a movie that would be banned in most countries. Those were my nightmares. So I was like, this is my warning that I am not supposed to be researching this. And Sabrina was like, well, I will. (laughs) I'll do it. So This is it. And it's turned into a two-parter. I will say I have not had anything negative happen. That's good. You said you've been cleansing your space a bunch too, right? I have been. And in preparation for this, I read a book that I devoured so quickly. And I read it. I decided to read it at the beach rather than at my home because- Good call. It has a lot of warnings to people who have pets or just also I didn't want to make mm-hmm. my space. I didn't want to fill my space, yeah. my beautiful home with such good energy with anything negative. And here we are now recording it in this beautiful home. So whoops. In the beautiful home. I know. Ugh, it's concerning me. I should have done my ribbon wrapping technique. I'm mad at myself that I, I didn't before this. Well, we'll have good intentions, but I guess for all of the people out there who have said that they've experienced a lot of hauntings listening to our podcast, perhaps this episode and next week's episode is a great one to listen to when you're like outside on a walk in a park or somewhere that's not your home. Sunny day. Absorb all the good vibes. And maybe be ready to – or just uh, we can talk through a little bit before we get into the actual subject matter. Maybe we can talk all of us through – some type of protective wording, phrasing to set Mm -hmm. good intentions for everyone. That being said, before we get into Peggy, which I feel like, so my neighbor's name is Peggy. And so I feel like every time I say it, she's going to be like, why are you talking about me? (laughs) Peggy, it's a different Peggy. This will be the one episode she listens to. Right. I have a ghost story. And Corinne, you've heard this. But Mm -hmm. when we were in Toronto for our show in Toronto, I got lunch with some of my cousins because I have my aunt and her six kids and their families all live in Ontario, right outside of Toronto. So they came to the show, which was really, really fun. And I got lunch with them beforehand. And it was a gossip sesh, like a family gossip session that I've never had before because they're in Canada, so I don't see them that often. And when I would see them, it would be yeah. a whole big family event. So it was the first like, ooh, we're friends. You can't talk shit on your family when your family's right there with you. <laughs> right. So I got a couple ghost stories because I was talking to them about my dad and his like past life regression therapy and all of that because this is my dad's side of the family. And Colleen, one of my cousins who listens, hey, Colleen, she went home and asked my aunt, her mom, for more stories. And so for people who don't remember, my dad, some people believe he's possessed by a past life because in his sleep, he speaks a different language. He has battled with something for his whole life. Mm -hmm. And he did a past life regression hypnosis therapy and discovered that this past life of his they even found his name. They were able to like go back in records, and I don't have the specifics of that. But basically, this man in his past life was not a great guy. He harmed people. Yeah. He was he just didn't follow the rules. And this past life of his is almost trying to come through in my dad's current life 
and take over or influence my dad in some ways, which has been a really, really difficult thing for my dad. So I brought this up at lunch. Apparently, my aunt goes, that makes so much sense because in childhood, and my aunt is older. So in childhood, Mm -hmm. my dad was convinced like something bad had happened and that he had done something bad. But my aunt was like, there's no way that he did. But because it was so present in his young age, it felt so real to him. And it's already confusing too when you have really realistic like dreams and and stuff. It's hard to differentiate. So as a child, if he's having all of these memories from a past life come forward, I'm sure it was yeah, really difficult to understand. Is that like me now or is that something I'm remembering right. from another time? Well, and also think of the past life stories that we've heard and read on the podcast where they're usually like pretty lovely lives. They know how they died. They mm-hmm. remember their family. But this is like, like my dad's is dark. Yeah. So he also apparently growing up, they went and did this like scouting trip and they were in a cemetery or maybe they were in a camping area and all of a sudden he like swore that there were two older, like a woman and a man, both dressed in Victorian era clothing. He was so convinced that they were there mm-hmm. and no one else saw it. This was a scouting, like a Boy Scouts trip? Yeah, I think like scouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Or like some type of camping. They He grew up in Pakistan. Yeah. I don't know what the Pakistani version of it is. So it was a, with a group of a lot of other kids and people that weren't just immediate family members when Correct. he was witnessing this and experiencing this. Correct. Got it. Okay. And keep in mind, these are just like a couple stories that I got really quickly from my cousin and my aunt, but there are so many. Yeah. So I'm just going to tell two more. The next one, my aunt said her and my dad shared a room in Muscat and my dad like woke up in the middle of the night, like truly shot up in bed and start saying like, they're coming for us. We have to get out of here. We have to get out of here. We have to get out of here. Like staring forward in a trance. And my aunt obviously is freaked the fuck out. It's the middle of the night. Who is coming for them? So it's scary. Totally fine. He was already a creepy kid too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Seriously. Makes it worse. And so she has to like go over to him and he's in a trance and he like just falls back into bed and falls asleep. And my aunt was like, I definitely did not go back to sleep that night. And then last story, and then we're going to get into Peggy. Uh, the last story is, I think it's the same house where this they're coming story happened, but they lived in this house. And for some reason, there was a bathroom in like the main area that they just never used to the point where my grandma put a chair in front of the door to like keep it closed from, which means that it's, they were scared of whatever was inside the bathroom. Yeah. It's reminding me of that one bathroom stall in the hotel, Captain Cook, where it's just oh. like, you lock away your problems, you ignore it. But that's so spooky. An entire room sealed off in a bathroom yeah. nonetheless with like children and a whole family. Like you need an extra bathroom. You always right. need an extra bathroom. You never go wrong with an extra bathroom. So they have this locked. They're living there. I don't know how many years they lived there, but they lived there for a while. They never used this bathroom. Apparently, they all got bad vibes from this bathroom. Like they'd walk by it and they'd want to like walk by it really, really quickly. They'd hear things behind the door. It felt very, very, very Ugh. bad intentions, whatever's yeah. behind there. Do you know what they would hear? Was it like rattles, footsteps, or was it like whispers? Do you know? Did they tell let's you see, the details of what they heard? Let me see if she wrote the details. Because I'm so curious. Because it's like my my dad, when he lived in an apartment complex one time when he was in college or just after college, he and his roommate would hear across this, the hallway from them people talking. And it was a completely vacant apartment, but they would constantly hear people talking. So it's like uh-huh. they knew it was ghosts because it was people talking and not maybe like, I don't know, a bird inside because things weren't getting like knocked around and squawks. So this is... Okay. She said, granny put a chair against it and mom kept saying something was in there. She could always feel things like moving past her if she was by that room, like things were moving in there. When they moved out, there was a rat found in there. But like when they would hear these noises, they knew like they would check and they'd have, they had an exterminator come. There were no animals. And there was this like living rat in there. And 
apparently they all believed that it was something evil that took the shape of a rat because when they saw the rat, it like didn't look like a rat, like almost shapeshiftery. Ew. Yeah. Ew, 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 yeah. ew. Keep in mind, this family is like very, very Catholic. My grandma is a devout Catholic, goes to church multiple times a week. So she doesn't want to buy in or really approach and talk to, about these things. But she's had mm-hmm. so many experiences. She's also the one who, when my grandfather passed away, she was getting these phone calls night after night at the time that we believe was when my grandfather passed away. And we think it was him calling her. But apparently there's like psychic abilities in that family. And we all believe Dang. that my grandma has them, but she just like won't interact. How old was your dad or, or how old was your, your grandparents when they moved from Pakistan to the North American continent? Corinne, this is bringing up my desire uh, to start a podcast about my family because my dad has so <laughs> many <laughs> secrets, secrets. So many secrets. At least DNA has solved, a, 23andMe solved a few of them for you. You now know some of your bloodline. I always knew my, my bloodline for the most part, but it was more, it hit, the secrets are more like what happened in the family, like mm, family mm-hmm. stories. And there's like one rumor that I really am curious about, but it happened in Pakistan and like records are weird. Anyway, there was something that happened in Pakistan. My dad was sent to boarding school in England and he came to the States for college. My grandparents lived in Oman until like 2000, I want to believe, I think something like that. And then they moved to the States. Mm, okay. Because I was just curious, like, do you think the reluctance to be kind of like psychic, witchy, understand her power is very personal and has to do maybe with some of the Catholicism, which is also a hard pill to swallow because it's so it's so personal how people experience religion because some people might have those feelings and abilities and be like, oh my gosh, I'm seeing angels. I'm seeing, I'm so yeah. connected. Like I speak to God, but She's saying, I don't want to talk about this. I don't believe in this at all. But I was curious what culturally was the belief in the area that she was living in, too, and if that had any influence on her. There's a lot of beliefs. I mean, that's where the – what are those trees? Like the, the jinn spirits that like are in those trees, the one that we talked about mm-hmm. from Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Really like we be like – they regrow trees with their roots. Oh, my gosh. I keep wanting to say bonsai and it's not right. Banyan. Banyan tree? Banyan trees. Yes, yes, yes. There you go. So they believed like spirits were in those trees. I don't I'll have to. This is where my investigative journalism podcast, I can't even say the words, but this is where my podcast begins. Yeah. Your dad would hate that. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. It would mostly be an expose on his life. As if we don't already have a weird relationship. <laughs> It is so wild, though, oh. to think that, you know, like there was a part of him, things that he did in his past life that seeped through, things that were repeated, mm-hmm. behaviors, actions that he was so, trying so hard to get away from, but they came for him and it happened again in this life. I almost think of your dad's life, like the way that there's always like this darkness or like this past that feels so present. It feels like a movie where he's like constantly trying to get to the next life and escape it. But his past keeps oh, that's coming so from like his soul keeps that's trying to like so jump spooky. and be like, I'm getting away from it. But he can't. He always comes to it again. Okay. I kind of feel like Zach Bagans and my dad should like hang out. Cause you, you feel the darkness has gotten Zach as well. <laughs> well, I almost feel like I I feel like Zach has a uh, has a past life that is almost trying to come through too. I don't know. They give me similar vibes. I've never met Zach. I've only met his persona on television. Right. But there's just something similar. There's something going on. I don't know. Yeah. Some people just have that where you're like, we know there's more happening. Yeah. And there's also like this childlike energy to both of them where I feel like they both just need to be held in a womb. They need the rebirthing therapy. We should put them in one of those deprivation pods just in complete darkness, like in the water. Honestly. And just sing some songs outside and go through an entire life's conversation. Nine months of conversation so they feel like they're back in the world. Wait, that's kind of cool. Come out. Come anew. I'd be so depressed if I was kept in nine months of darkness. Actually, so when I was struggling with my sickness, when the Rona got me, I couldn't go outside because I was quarantined. 
And yeah. I get plenty of sunlight in here through the windows, but there's nothing like actually having the sun like hit your like skin. Real sun. And I started crying yeah. on like day three. And I was like, I'm just so sad. I haven't been outside. And then I looked at Brian and I was like, I'll never survive in a bunker. And it just like threw me into oh, an app. I like so dissolved. Sorry. I was like, my bunker dreams. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So yeah, no, that therapy wouldn't work for me, but maybe, maybe this new therapy for your dad. I'm sorry that your dream has been taken away from you by Thanks. yourself. I'll survive three days. That's what I know. Three days <laughs> in a bunker and then my mental illnesses will catch up to me. <laughs> okay. I think you would survive more because three days inside while sick is different than three days inside not sick. I think you could do more than three days yeah. if you like I feel agree. energized and do things. And if we have our lazy river in the bunker, then you're good. Exactly. I feel like it's Barbie's dream house, but a bunker. That's what ours is going to be. Barbie's dream bunker. Barbie's dream bunker. Dua Lipa will perform every night. I love that she's in our bunker. Okay, great. Everyone's invited. Except for you, Ken. <laughs> well, Ryan Gosling, you're I'm just invited. kidding. Just no. I learned nothing from the movie, clearly. <laughs> okay. Well, speaking of learning... And speaking of our Lord and Savior, Zach Bagans, <laughs> I am a little bummed that this that we didn't get to go to Vegas before this because I was really hoping that we could go to Zach's museum and visit Peggy before talking about Peggy. I know, which was the plan, but then we got, yeah. November, we will visit Peggy. I am about to tell you a story. Okay. Everyone buckle up, brace yourselves. Yeah. And a couple warnings. If your pets start acting up or you start to see a lot of flies, I would highly recommend pausing this episode and doing a little bit of like a cleansing ribbon wrapping technique and take care of yourself before you continue on. And also a 10 second ribbon wrapping technique instruction right now for anyone who's like, what is that? Close your eyes, sit somewhere or stand somewhere or lay somewhere and picture a ribbon any type of ribbon, any type of thickness, any type of color, whatever feels right to you, have it start at the top, the crown of your head, circle around your entire body until it goes past your toes and closes, zips off, and then you're protected. It can take 30 seconds. It could take 15 minutes, whatever feels right. I won't do it because personally when I do it, it takes me like 10, 20 minutes every single time. The ribbon controls its own speed. It's getting stuck on my butt. On your butt? Oh. Yeah, like can't get it past my butt. You got a big a big bump. It's, you got to stretch the ribbon. I found you, Miss New Booty. Okay. I think I got it. Woo. I'll set Great. another intention in a moment. Okay. Okay. The content of this episode and the subject matter of which we are about to discuss is known to cause intense reactions emotionally, mentally, and physically. So please be warned and listen at your own risk. Oh, also, if you start to feel heart palpitations, please stop listening. Oh, my God. What am I going to do if I feel this? I can continue as a one-woman show. <laughs> and you can listen to it back okay. later. You can, like, do director's edit where you come in and do, like, commentary. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, in this point, part, I would have said. <laughs> or I should just, I'll record myself going, oh, my God. No way. <laughs> <laughs> this is the story of an object that is haunted, or perhaps possessed. Reading about, looking at, or listening to information about this object has caused hundreds, if not thousands, of reactions worldwide. This is Peggy the doll, a doll with a spirit or spirits attached to it. The entity oh. contained in this petite and unassuming object is believed responsible to be the perpetrator of amnesia, rage, headaches, seizures, strokes, and heart attacks. These stories are not to be taken lightly. These are horrible. Yes, and we highly advise you take precautions prior to listening to this episode. Yeah, especially, I mean, that was an intense warning section. I feel like normally it's like, oh, you might have a stomach ache, you might throw up, you might feel faint. This is like, you might die. No one, no one has died. I will give that to Okay. No one has died. Good. Yeah. I also think there's a little bit of a misunderstanding about this doll. Okay. Let's give Miss Peg. Benefit of the doubt. Blank slate. A new reputation. She's in her reputation era. 
Yeah, but there is a quote. This is like, you know how like if someone were to write and review Peggy the Doll, this is this is the review. And this is a quote from a previous owner of the doll. Okay. That doll nearly ruined my life. I want to forget it ever existed, and I hope God protects you all. What a warning. What message was this on eBay when they, when she auctioned it off? Like, what? We'll get there. Okay. So to set intentions again, like I'm, I've said, I have yet to experience anything strange in connection to doing the research. I want to be very clear right now that I build around me and around all of you and you, Corinne, a space of light, love, and positivity. Nothing with ill intent or dark energy is permitted to enter this space. This bubble of protection extends to my home, my pets, my loved ones, to you, Corinne, and all of those who may listen. That being said, the YouTube video will contain images of the doll and of some things that we're going to talk about. So if you do desire the visual component of the episode, please come watch it over here. Okay. Thank you. This is so weird. I kind of like naturally, I like went like this just as like a little visual, like put my hand around as you were doing the intentions. But then I, I set my hand up and I, as you were doing the intentions, I felt like I did get like a little bit of buzzing <gasps> on my hand. Like I was absorbing it. So I'm going to, for the rest of the episode, have my hand down and closed and keep all the protection in and not let anything else come near me. It's kind of like yoga where like, where, you know, if you need to t- get energy, you Tingling. have your palms up. But if yeah. you're trying to balance and ground your energy, put your hands down. Yeah. Well, all the way from California, I've received your message. Thank you. So this is part one of what is arguably one of the most haunted objects in the world. We've heard of Annabelle. We've heard of Robert the doll, of Chucky. But today we're sharing a story of another doll, Peggy the doll. We talked to Em and Christine and they said that this is the scariest thing that they had ever covered. And they refused to use the name Peggy, which they then referred to the doll as PTD. I know this does feel like you saying it so many times feels like when you're not supposed to say a name like three times or whatever, but I think you're already at seven, <laughs> so, but it does feel wrong. Well, here's what, it doesn't feel wrong to me because not anywhere in this research did I see reference of not saying the name. And okay, also I do believe the spirit's name is Peggy, so I'm honoring her by using her name. Okay. Okay. If we do feel uncomfortable, we can pull it back. No, I think I, I don't know anything about her other than I feel like she haunted you. The reputation isn't great. So, and I had horrible yeah. nightmares. So for reference, I'm going to credit the book that's called Peggy the Doll, a very different haunting. I highly recommend that you read it because while I do feel like I'm doing a good, good job of covering the whole story, there is a lot more. The book is 115 pages. It's a very quick read. It's written by Jane Harris, with whom this story begins. Jane and Simon Harris are a couple from Stourbridge, UK, who have dedicated their lives to paranormal investigations. They run HD Paranormal Research and have a dedicated space in their home, similar to the Newkirks, where they keep and research haunted objects. So they've been doing this for years. I think they opened the company in... 2012. So 11 years they've been doing this. And Mm -hmm. even before that, they had been interested into the paranormal. With their company, they do like ghost hunts. They do tours. You can reach out to them like someone with this story does. Jane's interest began when she was a teenager. She said she had met a woman who owned a haunted doll that turned the TV on and off and rattled forks and knives in the kitchen drawer. So her interest began with the doll. And since then, Mm -hmm. she has spent much of her life inquiring further on paranormal and has become a resource for people who do not know where to go. She is a qualified psychologist and a master herbalist. She and her husband, Simon Harris, co-founded this company. And Simon has developed many new paranormal investigative tools like the dual scryer. So he's a bit of an engineer when it comes to paranormal investigative tools. Cool. Little inventor. Yeah. Okay, so they started the company in 2012, and in the following years, they began receiving messages from all sorts of people requesting their help with hauntings. People would be like, my house is haunted. Help me. What do I do? People would say, I have a haunted object. Help me. What do I do? Some people reach out and request that 
Simon and Jane come retrieve or remove the object from their home. So when in 2014, Jane opened her inbox to find an email with the subject line, doll, it was not out of the ordinary. (laughs) It was September 9th, 2014. This email was long and erratic. It was panicked. The emailer, who Harris in her book referred to as JW for privacy and anonymity, was apparently desperate. The second photo is the email. I'm going to read it, but if anyone likes a visual reference to follow along, this is apparently a paraphrased paraphrased version of the email. Jane took out a lot of the like rambling because it was a lot of the same stuff. Okay. It says, Dear Sir, Madam, I am writing this in the hope that you can please help me. I have reached a point now at which I can't carry on this way. Let me just explain that I have always had a huge belief in the paranormal and the idea that spirits were all around us. I didn't know, though, that they could affect the living in the way that they have been affecting me. I can't talk to anyone about this as I am sure they will think I am crazy. Some days I do wonder if I'm crazy myself. I have a doll here, which I am sure is causing my house, maybe even me, to be haunted. If I hadn't lived through it for the last few months, I would think that that sounded completely insane. I read that you have a lot of experience, so please reply and tell me what I should do. The doll is no longer in my house, and I will not have it here. I can't sleep at all. Today is now the fifth day that I have been awake. No sleep at all. There is a figure that comes to me at night, stands at my bed. It is dark, a lady, I think, but it doesn't move or speak. I end up frozen to the bed in fear. I tried to put a cross on my wall and pray to Jesus, but it does not help. Please come soon, JW. (laughs) I mean, that is five nights. It's so hard too, because it's like- I know. Is this person after five nights of not sleeping, are they just delirious and they're seeing things or is or is there something there? Is this maybe one of the worst hauntings you'll ever experience? This is the most haunted doll you'll ever find. And also, where's the doll now? <laughs> we'll find out. They were like, the doll, I don't have the doll right now. Where'd you put it? Okay. So it was still in her possession, just not in her home. Like she refused to okay. have it in the same home. The scary thing is that we still to this day do not know the exact details of what happened with JW and this doll. All we have is that email and the knowledge that whatever it was has caused her to not sleep for five nights and that continuously every night this spirit of a woman is standing at the edge of her bed. So Jade and Simon are like, well, this seems interesting. So together with their good friend and reliable psychic, Hazel Myers, who is a whole other, I mean, story on her own, but there's a whole chapter actually about Hazel in the book. So if you want to know more about her, you can read that. They, the three of them drove to Sheffield to retrieve this doll. And Hazel is a psychic. So she, every time they go together to go collect a haunted doll, she does her protective things and she's very, she grounds herself and places a protection around everyone. Mm -hmm. She starts doing this. She calls upon her spirit guides for protection. And something that has never happened to her before happens. Instead of her spirit guides appearing to her, the face of a man appeared and he spoke three words to her. They won't help. Meaning her spirit guides won't help. Not with this. That's so spooky. It's like, who is this guy? Are you keeping my spirit guides captive right now? Are they afraid of you? Or are you like the boss of the spirit guides? And you're like, hell no, are we getting involved? I don't know. But immediately, Hazel's like, yeah, something is definitely off about all of this, about this doll. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't tell Jane and Simon because she just doesn't want to worry them as well. She's just continuing to speak protection whatever words around the three of them. She doesn't feel like it's a negative thing per se. Like she doesn't think they're in danger, but she's just like, this is weird. Something is different. Yeah. So they arrive to JW's home and every spidey sense, it's like high alert, red flags, everything just feels off. And they were suspicious because this email did seem a bit crazed. It's a serious 
they're putting themselves into the home of a stranger. Like, what are they getting into? It's definitely, there's unease on top of not knowing what the haunting's going to be. And then JW opens the door and she is very clearly sleep deprived. She looked like she was a woman on the cusp of a breakdown. And in the book, Jane talks about they have young kids. She's like, I know sleep deprivation. I know what it's like. And I recognize it in this woman. I could tell that she was worn down. I mean, how many days can you go without sleep before you die? Seven? Yeah, I don't know. Something like that. So the lack of sleep was evident. This woman very clearly had not exaggerated in her email. And JW guides Jane, Simon, and Hazel to a small outbuilding behind her home. So I'm imagining like a shed. And immediately upon entering the space, Hazel becomes physically afflicted. She becomes lightheaded and nauseous. The three had no idea what they were coming in here to retrieve. Like they had not seen any visuals or anything. They didn't know what the hauntings would be like, but they immediately were like, this is something different. This is way more intense than we thought. Then they're all kind of standing there in silence and JW does this little eye thing. And she looks down, like she's not saying anything. She looks down to her right and there's something wrapped in a blanket or like, it's like something rolled up. Mm. And she like looks to Jane and Simon and back to the thing, like insinuating, there it is. But she refuses to touch it. So (laughs) Jane picks it up and she's surprised. Like, this is really, really light. It's not what I expected. And so she slowly starts to unroll the fabric and pieces of blonde hair come out. She unravels it more. Pale white skin. She unravels it more. These piercing blue eyes. As she's doing this, she notices that JW is having a physical reaction, like terror (sighs) in her eyes. She is shaking. She looks like she's going to cry. And Jane looks at the face that's starting to peer back at her. And she's all of a sudden struck by loud ringing in her ears. And she feels numb. So she quickly like wraps the doll back up. So they don't even fully unwrap the doll at this moment. All they know is blonde hair, little doll, blue eyes. And this woman believes that this doll is responsible for what she was experiencing. Correct. And the second Jane looks at it, she starts having a physical reaction to it as well. So it kind of seems appropriate. Awfully suspicious. Yes. So Simon, Jane, and Hazel are all like, okay, we should probably, let's just keep this doll wrapped up safe in this little like bundle And keep it like this and then we'll bring it home and we can do the investigation properly and set like a cleansing and keep this space clear when we actually unwrap her. Mm -hmm. So when they're leaving JW's house, they ask JW if she would like to be updated on what Jane, Simon, and Hazel discover. To which JW responds, and this is the quote I read earlier in the episode, that doll nearly ruined my life. I want to forget it ever existed and I hope God protects you all. Okay. I understand where she's coming from, but mm-hmm. I do wish that we had access I know. to more of her story. But you have to respect that she's like, absolutely not. This thing is finally gone. Hopefully she yeah. has found peace. She's not haunted by this thing anymore. But I, I'm so curious. <laughs> and you know what? We still have enough to do a two-parter on this, so <laughs> so we're okay. Hold on to your butt. We're okay. If your ribbon can get over your butt, hold on to it. Hold on to it. So Jane and Simon Harris are now in possession of something very, very powerful. They had no idea what the next two years would hold for them, but this doll was about to change their lives. So Jane, Simon, and Hazel returned to Sourbridge, UK with this doll. And this is not their first rodeo, nor their first haunted doll. So they established a routine in order to begin investigating haunted objects. Their home has plenty of other haunted objects, so they basically set up isolation, they set up equipment, they have night vision cameras, digital cameras, EMF readers, motion detectors, temperature gauges, etc. Like they have all the bells and whistles set up and they are Mm -hmm. putting this doll, who at the time does not have a name, keep in mind. So they're putting this doll in this space and they unwrap it and they reveal like this white dress and it's very beautiful. The one thing I'm not clear of in the picture which we can show now, there's a cross around this doll's neck. Of the doll? Should I look at it? 
if you would like to. It's really not that scary. Oh, she looks like a golden girl. Yeah, she's Doesn't cute. She? Yeah. She's so cute. But I'm not clear on whether or not they put the cross on it because there's a part of the story where it's a little I, I don't know. Either it it was on the doll or they put it on there. I don't know. But so they set up all of these things in order to monitor environmental changes that are brought on by the presence of a new object. And so they leave this doll in isolation with all of these tools and they monitor. And usually, usually, I say this usually, asterisks, after a couple of days, they would review all of the stuff and they would begin to attempt to contact the spirit. But all three, Jane, Simon, and Hazel, kind of don't engage. Mm -hmm. No, like usually someone would be like, okay, let's go investigate. Let's go try to talk to the spirit. They all three just like don't talk about it. Huh. So they're monitoring it, but they're clearly all trying to put it off for as long as possible. Yeah. Which to me just means like right off the bat, there were bad vibes that all of them are picking up on. Yeah. And it's like you don't want to talk about something if everything in your body is telling you not to. Yeah. Six weeks after bringing the doll home, they still had not attempted communication. Six weeks after bringing the doll home, Jane becomes horribly ill. I don't know if this is like she became sick after six weeks or she was starting to get sick. And by six weeks of having the doll, she's like very, very sick. Yeah. She can hardly get out of bed. She's super weak, lightheaded, and has zero energy, which was interesting because remember yesterday we were supposed to record and I woke up with zero energy, like so lethargic. I know. I was like, are you okay? So there was part of me that was like, is it that or is it I am a woman and I have hormones and I'm tired and I'm getting my period? Yes. The curse of womanhood. Yes. So Jane and Simon have two young kids at this time. So they were like, well, maybe this is just normal exhaustion from everyday life. You've been working really hard. Simon's like, take some time, relax. Like, I'll I'll take charge for a little bit and I'll let you recuperate. But days pass. It gets worse. She's not getting better. So they go to doctors. She gets blood tests. Everything is normal. Like, there's no thyroid issue. There's no li- like iron deficiencies, nothing. She hmm. is in perfect health and yet she has no energy. She can't wake up. Right. So Hazel is like, I have an idea, Jane. Why don't I take the doll off of your hands? Just to see. Maybe the doll is taking your energy, like a horcrux. Jane is like, okay, let's try that. But first, I do want to, like, we haven't engaged with this doll at all. I want to do a bit of an experiment. So this is fascinating. She ends up booking an appointment with a local medium. The medium's name is Patricia Redman. And she uses a false name because she doesn't want the psychic to look her up or have any like knowledge that Jane is a paranormal, like in the paranormal space, basically. So she's like, Mm -hmm. okay, booking my appointment under a pseudonym. I'm going to bring the doll with me. So on November 5th of 2014, Jane puts the doll in her car and drives to the medium. Immediately when she's greeted by Patricia, Patricia's like, oh, like you can, your, your two friends can come in. They don't have to sit in the car. And Jane's like, what? Two? Two friends? Patricia looks at Jane and is like, well, then you just you just drove in in the black 4x4, right? There was a man and a woman with you. <sighs> I've chose all over my body. <laughs> Jane shakes her head and is like, nope. And the two of them have this like clear look of acknowledgement being like, okay, we are talking oh about my God. I'm proud of Jane for coming up with this plan. In the first place, because I think this is a great plan. And this gives me more faith in her as a paranormal investigator, too. Like, she's already trying to make sure everything is completely valid and sound and real and not just people reacting based off what she tells them. So, good plan, but yeah, startling to. Do you see the flies around me? No, are you shitting me? Are you fucking kidding me? Sabrina. But my door is open. My my door. Because Leia's outside. My door is open. There's no screens here. This is like not like a... <gasps> it just... I don't have bad vibes. I promise. I have no bad vibes. It's just an interesting... And this one's just sitting here. Let me just take a picture of it. Little guy. Oh, I hate this. I pray my sweet little raggedy Ann doll in the corner is not afflicted by whatever comes from this episode. 
It's just sitting here. It's like sitting by my Zoom. It's just listening. Hey, it's the two spirits. They're just, this is the test. They're going to see how respectful we can be of their story. You better be respectful of me, okay? (laughs) Yeah, it's a two-way street. I also have um, bread dough rising, and I think they're in. They're over. The kitchen witch is breaking more bread. Okay, now there's four of there's four of them. <laughs> uh, okay, so Patricia and Jane are now staring at each other, and Patricia does this weird thing, and she takes like a step backwards, and she kind of pauses, and then she looks at Jane and she goes, "I'm so sorry." I cannot do a reading for you today. She tells Jane that the moment that Jane walked in, the energy in the room became very heavy and it felt like everything in the psychic space was like very like cloudy. And so it felt like she was incapable of doing a reading. Oh my gosh. So spirit guides are hiding from this thing. Psychics don't want to encounter this thing or people or energies, whatever the heck it is. Everybody's closing the door on this. Yes. She's like, you can come back another time. And Jane's like, nope, that's all. (laughs) That's all I needed to know. So Jane never goes back. And she is like, yes, there's for sure things or something or multiple things connected to this doll. And I very much believe they are impacting my health. So let's keep in mind a man and a woman in the car. Let's just remember that. Keep that in the back of your head. Okay. So Hazel takes possession of the doll. And after three weeks, Jane is back to normal. She feels totally fine. And she's like, okay, I'm good. Let's start to investigate. And I think they do a couple of like seances or type. I don't know how, but Hazel necessarily does it, but she communicates with the spirit and they receive the name Peggy. I'm not totally sure of the timeline where this is, but I imagine one of the first things they did is they got the name. Mm -hmm. They were given the name Peggy. And through further communication and then research, they believed that the spirit had a connection to Hyde Park in London and had potentially died in 1946 from a tightness in her chest. So maybe a heart attack. Yeah. Peggy, the spirit, was afraid of institutions. So those are like information that they learned through communication with her. Oh, no. This makes me so sad because it's bringing me back to the classic insane asylum predicament where people were horribly mistreated. Yes. Makes me worry for her. So they have this knowledge and then completely separate. Simon finds a psychic somewhere else in the world where they have no knowledge of anything that they had already communicated with this doll or with Hazel or whatnot. And this psychic had received the name Margaret, which is Peggy is a nickname for Margaret. So after these two names are coming through, they are like, we believe her name is Peggy. Let's call her Peggy the doll. Jane actually did some research and found death records for a Peggy Hines who lived in Hyde Park, London, and was born in an institution and died in 1946. Oh, this seems promising. Right. I don't think they found anything more on that, but it does Mm -hmm. seem promising. And therefore, the name Peggy the Doll was born, and they believed that they were communicating with the spirit Peggy. Now, at this point, they've kind of accumulated a lot of following. They have their company, HD Paranormal. They have their website where they are in constant communication, like kind of like a blog. They are posting a lot on their website, and a lot of their subscribers will follow along, read things. They like to see what Jane and Simon are collecting or what objects they have. So it's now early 2015, and they had picked up the doll September, late September, early October of 2014. They now know Peggy's name. They're like, okay, let's introduce her to our followers. On February 25th, 2015, Jane and Simon posted the photo that I had showed you. We can put it up here again of the doll on their website. That is the exact photo that they posted. Okay. Simon and Jane received hundreds of private messages within the first two days of posting the image. These are all private messages. This is the first time this doll is published on the internet anywhere, and they are receiving hundreds of private messages. All of them are containing very similar reports. These are the words, lightheadedness, heart palpitations, fear, pets going berserk, fear, 
just looking at the image of this doll was physically oh afflicting gosh. people from all over the world. Wait, this is kind of reminding me of Billy the Idol that Greg and Dana Newkirk have yes. too, where everyone was afflicted with nightmares. Yes. Just anyone who looked at the picture were just yeah. crippled by these terrifying nightmares. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, Peggy. I know. The image shows the doll with a cross around her neck. And this is why I was not sure when the cross was put on because in those responses and messages, 28 of them say that they felt like the cross should be removed from the doll. Some people were mm. hearing voices that said the spirit hated the symbol of the cross. Interesting. So this is the first intense reaction with the doll. Like this is the first time it's in the yeah. public and immediately it's, a, it's causing an intense reaction. And truly Simon and Jane were like, someone's messing with us. This is probably someone creating multiple emails and just sending us the same thing over and over. Like it's a, it's a joke, but it wasn't. No, I mean, that's so much effort too to make hundreds yeah. of emails to be like, yeah. you two very specific people, I'm going to make you worry about a doll out of everything in your possession. I'm going right. to simultaneously like add fuel to the fire with this doll by scaring you. It does make me curious too with the religious aspect of it if Peggy had some religious trauma and that trauma is what made her feel so disgusted and like held captive by this religious necklace on her maybe or maybe you'll have another theory by the end of this episode okay so simon and jane are like let's do an automatic writing session with the doll now it's march 16th 2015 the plan is for jane to drive over to hazel's with peggy where Hazel would do an automatic writing session. So on the way to Hazel's, Jane films a short video from her car. She has Peggy right next to her. She's seen in the car beside her. And Jane mm -hmm. just kind of like explains what they're going to do and how Hazel is going to serve as a conduit in which the spirit can write through her. She then posts this video on their Facebook group. She arrives to Hazel's probably like 10 minutes later and she checks her phone and she's surprised to see there's this woman by the name of Katrine Redick, who has sent a couple messages. The first message, hi, what's going on with Peggy? My heart is racing so fast and I feel dizzy. I'm in pain. Seven minutes later, after I saw your post, it vanished from the website and my phone went crazy. Sure enough, the video is gone. And then Jane is like, wait, that's so weird. So she's checking. It is vanished. She has, it's nowhere. And Jane says she's afflicting people currently. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it all. And Katrine is like, my heart is racing like a horse. She is mm. not well. So Jane is like, okay, Katrine, maybe you take a break from your computer. I hope it's nothing concerning, but just like, don't look at Peggy. Step away from your computer. Protect yourself. Right. So watching that, watching that video is what affected her? Yes. Okay. And it the video then deletes and makes her phone <sighs> go crazy. Jeez. So Jane's like, okay, well, this is the point of investigating. We're about to do an automatic writing session. And she puts her phone down. She's like, okay, I'm with Hazel now. We're going to do this. So they put Peggy the doll in a chair next to Hazel's fireplace. There are candles lit up. Hazel has like set everything as she does. And she sits at a small desk by the window while Jane is there kind of overseeing. Mm -hmm. Hazel takes a deep breath. And before closing her eyes, she looks at Jane. And she said the following, we're provoking something today, I think. I don't know what yet, but I just feel like something is about to happen. What an ominous feeling. I would be shitting myself. They spent one hour communicating with Peggy. And in that hour, the energy in the room shifted dramatically. Like it was very heavy. And in that hour, they asked the spirit for a sign. And in that hour, a woman some 300 miles north of Jane, Hazel, and Peggy the doll had a heart attack. Not just any woman, Katrine Redick. What? The woman who had immediately responded to Jane's Facebook post during the hour of this automatic writing session had a heart attack and survived. Oh my God. Thank God. Jeez. 
Like I said, no what one has the died. Heck? This makes me so stressed out. <laughs> Katrine fully believes that encountering Peggy the doll that afternoon opened her up psychically, and then she became the target of a spirit, which then caused her to suffer a heart attack. She survived, and, you know, maybe you could say it's all a coincidence, but this is not the end of Katrine's story, nor is it the only time Peggy, just the image of Peggy, has caused a physical ailment to this extent. My gosh. More on that a little later. But so naturally, Jane, Simon, and Hazel are growing more and more concerned about the spirit. Like, what the heck is it, and why is it causing this? Messages continue to pour in from people all over the world. Reports of nightmares, of pets being attacked, of experiencing anger and headaches. What is this? So I'm going to read a couple of encounters from people who viewed the image of Peggy the doll. And I'm going to read a couple in this episode and I will read more in the next episode. There are so many, so many. Mm. So it will be impossible to read all of them. But one of the first ones So remember they first posted the picture in February of 2015. So some of these are like initial responses. Jay Claire messaged and said, Jane, when you get the chance, can you contact me, please? I've had a migraine and palpitations since seeing this doll. M. Taylor wrote, I am not a psychic medium, not even that sensitive really, Jane, but I feel so, so very, very sick and spinny when I saw that doll of yours. I think it's just her energy, but do you feel it in person? At one point after I'd seen your photograph, I was thinking about her eyes and I felt like the floor was moving or if I was like on a ship or something, like seasickness is the only way to describe it. Do you think it's an evil spirit or a demon here for a purpose? I hope you don't think I'm crazy, but I'm sure it's not just me. Hmm. Dr. S. Collins wrote, you should know that the doll you're working with now is having a strange effect on me. Since I saw the picture last night, I have felt like someone is in my home watching me. At around midnight last night, I had her image on the monitor, and it started distorting and flickering. I then heard something like, shh, before getting cold down my entire left side. I turned the monitor off, and everything was fine. Jay Carlton inquired whether or not cats and dogs can sense evil, and said, ever since I opened the image, my little terrier Molly has been snarling and growling at the screen. And Molly the terrier is not the only pet to experience Peggy's spirit. It does seem like Peggy's spirit and image seems to trigger dogs more than cats, but there is one really, really terrible, horrid experience that I am going to share with you. Trigger warning, it involves the death of a pet. Oh, no. I know. And Jane says in her book, I'm going to spare you a lot of the details, which this woman did not do to her. And it's gruesome already. Okay, so if you don't want to hear it, I would fast forward 30 to 40 seconds. Yeah. This feels like that Black Mirror episode where I wish just everything that was inappropriate for me would just (laughs) be blurred out, fade away, (laughs) be blurred out. Yeah. A woman from Virginia contacted Jane to let her know that every time she viewed an image of Peggy or read about her, she would have horrible nightmares. The nightmare was always the same. In the nightmare, her cat was being chased by an unseen thing that eventually would catch the cat and choke her to death and then leave the cat at the outside of the front door. Three months after seeing the image of Peggy for the first time, this woman woke up and was leaving her house in the morning and was shocked to find outside of her front door was her cat, seemingly choked to death. This is where I draw the line. No harm to animals. Right. No harm to people. No harm. No harm. No harm. Jeez. So keep in mind, all of these messages are sent to Jane and Simon privately, at least the ones that I just read. So they're not on a public forum. Later, when things did get posted on Facebook, it became more public, but these first ones were private. So, you know, because I feel like it's easy to be like, oh, someone read one comment and like fed off of it. But a lot of these are private. Mm -hmm. So they're receiving these messages. Katrine has had a heart attack. Some say it's coincidence, but Jane, Simon, and Hazel are certain something powerful is at play here. So they plan a seance with Reverend Martin Jenkins. And it takes place on March 30th, 2015. And this is actually a really, really fascinating experience because it changed my perception of Peggy a little bit. Because it's terrifying that Katrine had a heart attack. But maybe this will change your mind about things. Okay. So it begins at 11.20 p.m. And it lasted for about an hour. They're monitoring everything. So they have like a temperature of the room is starting at 18 degrees Celsius, which is 
64 degrees Fahrenheit, which I'm like, that's a cold temperature to keep a room. Like, I feel like the normal is like 67. Anyway. Yeah, that is very chilly. If a cold waft came through, it would, it would feel colder than cold. Yeah, you're that's already true. cold there. That's a sharp wind hitting you. And maybe that's how you're supposed to do paranormal, <laughs> paranormal investigations. I don't know. So there are five people present in the room. Simon Harris, Jane Harris, Hazel Myers, Martin Jenkins, the pastor, and then Donna Griffiths, who's there as a note taker. The following details are what occurred in that hour. So Hazel begins by asking if Peggy is present with them. The EMF reader is triggered. It starts flashing. Hazel reports to the group that she sees a female standing by the altar close to the doll. Hazel sees this woman shaking her head no. So concerned, Hazel's like, what's wrong? Suddenly, the temperature in the room drops two degrees. Everyone feels it. Hazel asks the spirit if it would like to communicate using a pendulum and places it over her divination board, which is similar to a Ouija board. It has the alphabet on it. The pendulum swings, and as it starts swinging, Donna reports hearing faint laughter. No one else can hear it, but Hazel asks Peggy, is this you laughing? The pendulum swings to yes. And then Hazel asks, do you fear crossing into the light? The pendulum goes to N O F E A. Are no fear. So they're not afraid of crossing into the light. Okay. And then based on the laughter, I'm curious, like, was it a light, airy laughter? Was it a maniacal, dark, sinister chuckle? I don't know. What was the vibe Peggy was feeling? Well, right now I feel like the vibe's okay. Vibe's good. We're fine. Hazel asks, Are you happy to be communicating with us? H. A P P Y. Happy. Happy. Peggy, were you responsible for a recent health problem? The pendulum swings to no. Hazel asks, Are you aware of the lady we mean, Katrine? Yes. Then, before they can ask another question, the pendulum starts swinging to the letters W E A K, weak. So Hazel goes, What do you mean, Peggy? And then it spells out T-A-K-E-C-A-R-E-H-E-A-R-T-H-E-L-P. Take care. Heart. Help. Hazel says, were you trying to help? Pendulum swings to yes. <gasps> oh, okay, because initially when you were just... Before you even gave this response, when it was like Peggy wasn't responsible for it, it made me wonder if Peggy is a spirit that is being held inside this doll, held captive by another spirit mm -hmm. or something. And so they were like kind of battling it out over this person. But whew, she was trying to help justice for Peggy. Justice right? for Peggy. Justice for Peggy. But then something shifts in this. Okay. Hazel asks, do you feel like you have purpose here? I-K-N-O-W. I know. Hazel asks Peggy to step forward and make herself known to the group. And suddenly, Martin and Jane get chills. And the temperature drops eight degrees. Eight. That is a dramatic... Okay, so what was it set at again? It was like 64. Yeah, and then... Wasn't it? And then it dropped two, and then it dropped eight. So now it's like... It's almost like 50 degrees. It's like it dropped in Celsius, so it's even colder. Oh, yeah. shit. I know. It's about to snow in this place. Jane apparently in this moment when she gets these chills catches a glimpse of a woman. And in the book, she writes like she has maybe seen a full-figured apparition three times in her life. And this is one of them. And it was really, really brief. But later she told Hazel what she had seen. And Hazel was like, that is on par with what I have been seeing. Hi, Lay. Mm -hmm. Are we good to keep talking? <laughs> She's like, give me the canned food and me and Peggy are good. <laughs> <laughs> so it gets cold. I think it gets warmer again. Martin asks how they can help her. And all of a sudden, like, things change. Like, what they were feeling before is no longer what they're feeling anymore. There's a sudden tapping across the room. And it seems like there is wind inside this room. Like, the atmosphere shifts. Like, weather starts to exist. And then the pendulum starts to spin to random letters, like all over the place. And 
They're like, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to warn us? And it goes to yes. And then it spells out T-E-L-L-T-H-E-M-A-L-L. Tell them all. And they're like, what? What do you mean? Tell them what? And it just, everything goes quiet. The room settles. The temperature returns to 18 degrees. They keep trying to communicate with Peggy, but Peggy is gone. Whatever was there is gone. And the session is over. So what the heck? Tell them all what? What happened after like knowing the purpose to the tapping and the temperature changing and the wind right. and the spinning to random letters? What's going on? I know it feels so dramatic too with everything happening all at once. It's like it couldn't be clearer Yes, that there's an intensity in the room. Yes. But, ugh, tell them all what? It was being so descriptive. They were giving right. so much information before. And now it's just cut off. So they're still like nowhere closer to any answer, but they're like, okay, well, maybe Peggy actually helped Katrine, which is kind of a beautiful thing and a change in perception. But more reports of hauntings continue to flood in. Jane, Simon, and Hazel feel no clearer and are more determined than ever to get to answers. So they then turn to their online community and they have people submit questions and they start doing like live stream videos. In April 2015, Jane decides to film a session where she asks Peggy questions from people on their website, on Facebook. She sets up in the basement with an EMF reader. She lit candles and she has Peggy sitting like kind of in front of her. So she's closer, like basically how we're sitting, but Peggy here. Mm -hmm. And the session's pretty normal. They're getting a couple answers, but nothing new. And all of a sudden, Peggy falls and knocks over the camera, which is weird. Because no one was touching Peggy. Right. But it wasn't until after the session that Jane noticed something. She was reviewing the footage in a faster pace, like sped up. And she sees that throughout from the very beginning. Oh, shit. (laughs) That was, wow. You missed a massive fight with Maggie and Leah. Like where Maggie charged and attacked Leah. (laughs) Okay, so (laughs) where we were, Jane was doing the live stream and Peggy knocked over the camera. When she's watching it back, she's going at like a two times speed to watch it faster. And she sees that in the sped up version, Peggy starts here and ever so slowly moves closer to the camera, closer and closer and closer throughout the video until she knocks over the camera. I want to see the video. I'm, let's find it. We can link it. Okay. Let's search. If we find it, it'll be in the video. If we didn't find it, it won't be. And it if you be. find it, if it's people who are listening, if it's not in the video, then send it to us. We'll add it to part two. She posted on their Facebook, like the sped up version. She's like, did anyone else notice this? And she wakes up the next morning and it's all over the news. It's like a global sensation. It has been in Daily Mail, like newspapers from all over the world are picking it up and telling the story of this haunted doll. So it becomes viral and more people are now have their eyes on Peggy. More people are experiencing things. And then in October of 2015, Jane, Simon, and Hazel have a revelation. There is not one spirit possessing Peggy the doll, but two. Jane and Simon decided that in order to conduct further research into Peggy, they would bring her to a haunted location and conduct a group experiment with her. And they basically had been working with this company who was like, do you want to bring Peggy to something and raise money? So they made it a Mm. charity event and they decided that they would sell tickets and raise money for Sargent's Children's Center. And they decide that they're going to bring Peggy to a haunted location because they thought the spirits inside would maybe trigger the activity and give energy to the doll. Hey, that's that sounds familiar. Mm-hmm. We've heard that before. We have. On October 23rd, 2015, so this is now like a year after owning the doll, Jane, Simon, Hazel, and Peggy arrived to Derby Jail. Derby Jail is a super haunted location, which we could probably do a whole episode on, but that's not this episode. Both Simon and Jane agreed that from the moment they left their home, it felt like another person was with them. So like they live with Peggy and they're aware of Peggy being there, but they don't really feel like the presence of the spirit and they don't feel Mm -hmm. like they're living with it. But for some reason, 
the moment they left their home, they were very aware that Peggy was with them. Like it felt like a third person was with them. Yeah. A third or or four or an four. extra two people. Yeah. Right. So if you watch the entirety of their trip, they have Peggy in their hotel room. They feel like someone else is in their room with them. And then they go to the jail and they set Peggy up in a cell with like a bunch of talking boards and paranormal equipment for participants and people who had bought tickets to the event. As they're setting it up, they ask Peggy if she's with them. And suddenly Jane feels someone push her. And the room is filled with the scent of roses. Hmm. Guests then start to come to communicate with Peggy. And one woman, <laughs> Letitia, had a very intense image shown to her. While she was sitting beside Peggy, she began to experience an intense burning between her legs. Jeez. This is also confusing, too, because I feel like the scent of roses is such a... It's usually attributed with a good spirit or a benign spirit, just someone kind of passing through, not someone who's coming with such anger. You know, like you don't yes. normally get a like super rosy perfumed spirit shoving people. Right. But they're also in a jail. So this is like what's, uh, this is what confuses me about all this. Like they're in a place with other haunted entities. So it's hard to mm -hmm. differentiate. But anyway, this woman, Letitia, is sitting beside Peggy and starts to have an intense burning between her legs. She had to leave the room and then was scared to go to the bathroom because she was certain that based on how intense that pain was between her legs, she would find her legs bleeding if she went to the bathroom. Oh, my God. So she goes back into the room with Peggy, and again, the burning returned. So, too, did a visual. And this is trigger warning of sexual assault. The visual was of a woman being raped. Letitia was heartbroken, and she tried to console Peggy, and she – would receive responses of gratitude, like, thank you for your empathy and your sympathy. And then moments later, she would get a message like, get out. And it felt like there were these two forces present. Yeah. The entire evening is filmed with CCTV cameras. And in reviewing tapes, they saw this image. It's in the photos if you want to look at it. But it's like okay. of the jail and there's a shadow that almost looks like a man. It looks masculine. Oh. Also, what's behind it? What's looking through the bars? Oh. Do you see like glowing eyes? Ugh. Do you see that? Yeah. I mean, that looks that looks like a Yeti or something. I don't know. <laughs> there's Bigfoot. It's big Bigfoot watching on. Because yeah, there's like a yeah. lizard man esque type creature looking through the bars with glowing eyes. I wonder if that's lighting in the place. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. It must have been if they didn't draw attention to that, because that seems like yeah. very obvious but yeah no i totally see like where his hair color and his skin color is different than the shirt that he's wearing yeah this shadowy figure yes and they all agreed it felt evil mm -hmm. so this is they start to believe that there's a second spirit attached to peggy my question is was it always is that why the night of the seance the pendulum started spinning and going to random letters and there was a warning or did it become connected to the doll at the jail? It would make sense that there's two spirits because Peggy does seem to be helping warn people. Like if she was helping Katrine pay, know that her heart was weak, that's why she caused a heart attack, which is terrifying. But like then it drew attention to a problem. Why then are all these people having like headaches and pains? And is that because Peggy experienced that in her life? Or is it because there's something evil that perhaps is causing that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. A couple weeks after this event at the Derby Jail, Hazel awoke from a horrifying dream. She hears a voice whisper in her ear, just wait and see what I can do. She was certain it had to do with Peggy. It was a warning. Something dangerous was coming. Something bad was going to happen. Just wait and see what I can do. And you all will have to wait until next week. To find oh out what happens next in God. part two. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> I was on the edge of my seat. I was literally like, you could probably see in the video, it's getting closer and closer. <laughs> what? Oh, the hot and cold messages coming from Peggy. I'm so confused about who is in there, how many people, what they are. Yep. I guess we'll find out more next week, though. Dang. In part two, Peggy the doll and the spirits attached to the doll meet a paranormal investigative icon. They nearly take a life. It debuts on television. 
and gets a new daddy. Wow. That's clickbait if I've ever heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tuning in next week. <laughs> I can't wait to hear. Jeez. I will say the the um the flies have calmed down since closing the door. So I do think it was very okay. much just the good yeah. outside thing. Yeah. Maybe like five minutes after you had flies, I kept looking at my windows because a bunch of bees were coming by. But oh. it was just for a split second. It was like And you're maybe, so high up. Maybe 15, yeah, I'm 32 floors high. That's weird. But yeah, it was maybe just for 15 seconds. I don't know. The flies also come in pro- prominently in part two. Okay. So hopefully we've no fly so return next week. Wow. You know what? I'm glad that you're doing Peggy because I clearly, whatever was around me was like, let's not, let's not research this. Maybe I would have come across something or, or yeah, not maybe. dealt with it the way that you're dealing with it, which is probably the proper way to deal with it. But I do, I'm glad that you're doing this because I do feel that, yeah, there is, like when I looked at the picture of Peggy, I didn't feel sick. I didn't feel yeah sad. I didn't feel angry. I didn't feel anything. I felt, I don't know, just like there's a sweet little doll. Cute, cute little doll. Yeah. It is very unassuming. And so maybe we do need some new attitudes and new perspective. Yeah. I have a story to read to you. This is called Haunted by the Same Spirit as Post Malone. Hi, spooky Mm. sisters. First of all, I wanted to tell you guys that you're both amazing and inspirational AF. How you you. guys can make me go from too scared to move to crying and laughing, I don't know. You have a gift, (laughs) I swear. Hey, thanks. (laughs) Well, here's my story about how I might have had the same spirit or other entity that won't be named rhymes with women (laughs) that (laughs) attached to Posty and brought that home with me. Oh, I've always felt like I've been quite sensitive to the paranormal and others' energies. Yet for some reason, I decided it would be a fun idea to go visit Zach Bagan's haunted museum around Halloween time. That's what we're doing. Uh, that's, I mean, that sounds like a dream. Yeah. My group went prepared with a vial of holy water. We'll probably do the same thing. Yeah. And baggies of sage. We thought that we would be more protected. But then we were told that those things might actually upset whoever or whatever's in the space that we were going to. Okay, maybe we won't do that. We have heard that. And it's like, how do you know what, I guess maybe it's that space specifically. You just have to follow the rules of whatever space you're entering. Yeah. And also probably like your intuition, your gut feeling when you're in a space. Because on Campfire Stories, when we were talking to one of our listeners, also named Sabrina, she was talking about her very haunted house and her, her mom was on too. And they were both like, we're not going to do anything to cleanse because we know we have the gut feeling that it would be worse if we did anything. That Mm. right now it's more of a coexistence, a couple scary things. But if you tried, sometimes if you try to do something and it's not like the full thing, yeah, yeah, it gets worse. Aggravates. Okay. The most significant experience I had there was in Peggy the doll's room. Miss Peggy has a spirit box in front of her display that is constant static. Our guide told us that we could ask her anything we wanted to, and no one was brave enough to speak to her, so I finally asked her, (laughs) Hi, Peggy. How old are you? At that moment, the static stopped for a few seconds, and in a deep voice, we heard, Ten. Oh. I really wanted to ask her more questions, but my friends did not want to keep the conversation going with her, so we said our goodbyes, and we left it at that. Then we went to the Dybbuk box. The energy in that room was so heavy, and at our own will, we were allowed to get close to the dipping box. You're not supposed to touch it. I know. That's what Post Malone did. Don't do it. I know. My dumbass tried looking inside the box as it was slightly cracked. I guess the box tends to crack open with time, and the sage and salt around it pulled in closer to the box and needed to be readjusted at some points. So I'm looking in, and I got this weird feeling, and then I got out of that room. Since then, I have had the most pronounced events I've ever had. At an Airbnb in Burbank, shout out Sabrina. <laughs> I also feel like shout out Corinne because I lived in Burbank. For you two did summers. live in Burbank. I've never lived there. So I was a resident. I was trying to scare my boyfriend by hiding next to the doorway of his room. After five long minutes of him not coming out of the room, I peeked my head inside. And when I did, the door was wide open on the other side of the doorway and it swung closed. It hit me in the back of my head. 
What? I honestly couldn't process what happened, and I tried debunking it for another five minutes by putting my weight on where I was standing, looking for a draft, even jumping up and down by the doorway to make that happen again, but it never happened again. One of the more recent events was a painting in my room started swinging side to side like something had hit it and swung for a few minutes without losing momentum. And then this person inserted a video. <gasps> Let me just play it on here for you to see it. That's creepy. Very consistent. It's almost like there's a string pulling it back and forth. Yeah. Except there's not because we can see that there's not. I only noticed the painting after I noticed my dog sitting and staring at the wall behind me for a while. Other little things occur at random, like footsteps upstairs when I'm downstairs and home alone, noises inside my room at night, my dog staring into corners, and my GPS rerouting to take me down small, dark streets just to reroute me and take me back where oh. I was before I got rerouted. No. I still 1,000% recommend The Haunted Museum. <laughs> me too. I won't spoil it, but there are some things I did not expect to see there. Thank you guys for all the work on your podcast. Hope you can make it to Vegas for a live show sometime. We are. We're coming in November. I hope you're coming too. From Miriam. Miriam, please come. It was Miriam and then a ghost emoji. <laughs> Miriam and ghost. When was this sent? Do we have an update? I'm this curious. was sent. We have no update. Okay. Uh, this was sent in February, February of 2020. Okay. It's been a long time. I'm very curious. 02202020. That's when it was sent. 02202020. I feel like you added an extra. Oh, 2020. Gotcha. Gotcha. I was like, did you add an extra couple numbers? But no, you actually did that right. That was me being wrong. (laughs) I can't do math, but I can read numbers. Dang. I am concerned for you, Miriam. I hope you protect and cleanse yourself because you can do that. Maybe bathe in Florida water. Are we going to talk to Peggy when we're there? Because if there's a static mm-hmm. going, anyone can say anything. I would like to. I will. Ooh. I'll be brave enough to talk to Peggy. I got to dig out all those friendship bracelets and protective bracelets and religious bracelets everyone gave us from the live shows. I'm going to wear uh, them. And My ghost whole- girl. Oh, and go- yeah, the friendship bracelets too. My mm-hmm. whole arm is just going to be loaded <laughs> with different artifacts. Yeah. To protect me. Dang. <gasps> Oh my god. That will be interesting. I'm excited. I can't wait. And I also cannot wait for part two because there's so much more yeah. to Peggy's story. Me too. And I'm a little suspicious too that Miriam did encounter something Peggy related with getting hit on the back of her head, given that Peggy or whatever was around Peggy at right. the jail pushed someone. So <sighs> but I don't know. We don't know. We'll find out next week. Honestly, Miriam, I hope to never know because I hope the spirit just leaves you alone and we don't Mm -hmm. have to do any more further digging or research. (laughs) But But we will email you. And if something else has happened, email us back. Yes. And if you've had any paranormal encounter, if you've been to Zach Bagan's museum in Vegas, or if you have an encounter with geese and goats, please email them to us at two girls yeah. ghost podcast at gmail.com. That's a reference to, I think it's encounters 198. If you don't know what that is, go listen, rate and review us on iTunes. Come join us on tour. We still have so many cities. Actually, by the time this comes out, we have like a couple more weeks left. So come join us Ooh. on the road. We hope to see you there. You can support us in so many different ways, but really we want to see you at our live shows right now. Yeah. Uh, and letting everyone know to listen to our podcast. But we also want to say thank you to all of you guys for supporting us and for continuing to support us so that we get to have these opportunities and get to do these cool things. So thank you to all of you and all of our moderators who manage Discord and Facebook and make that still such a safe and kind and wonderful place. I know. I feel like that's not even ours anymore. That's like I was just going to say like we get credit for it, but it is not. It's not us. It's not our doing. Yeah. It's all of you guys and it's our amazing moderators. moderators. And so yeah. shout out to all of you guys cuz this yeah. is a community built by everyone else just happens to be attached to our name, <laughs> yeah, but to it's our, but it's yeah, you. Yeah, we are. It's you. This is the most haunted friend group and we're so grateful for all of you. Thank you for joining yeah. us each week and we love you. And we will See you. See you.
on the, the other, other side. side. Very spooky.